Well, go over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to some openings with you. John 5. And if you're writing these down, John 5. Then we can go to uh, 1 Timothy 2. And then we can go together over to Luke 4. And we're going to just continue in this series that I started um, a few weeks ago. I, I, was, I was gone for a couple of weeks. I heard y'all were really, really fed. Really fed. Really fed by Pastor Jeremy and uh, by Brother Ed. I'm so thankful that we have um, just been so blessed with people in this church that feed. Amen. And can really minister something good to you. But when I was here, we left off on ministering on Jesus, the ultimate servant. We're still, we're still on that. And, um, you know, there are just some things that I believe are, is really going to shine through to you through all the things that we see and all the scriptures that we look at. First of all, I, I, I want you to really see the Father's heart towards you. To really see the heart of God towards you. How much He longs to help you and to minister to you and to serve you. Hallelujah. And I mean, He has served us. He has gone so far to serve us, even just in His coming. Even in His coming, how far He had to go to lay everything aside, to be made in the likeness of man, just to be our substitute. I mean, it's just incredible to think about the lengths that God has went for us just to minister to us, just to redeem us, just to help us, to love on us. Hallelujah. Isn't it just amazing when you really start to dig in and see what he's done? It's just amazing. And so he has always served us and he's still serving us today. Hallelujah. Every day he is serving us. It's just amazing. And then the second thing that I want us to really see in, in these uh, lessons is the heart that God has put in you. You know, we have our Father's heart. We have our Father's heart. When we got born again, He put a new heart in us. Hallelujah. He put in His heart, His nature on the inside of us. And in, 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 in this new life that we live, we have this heart not only to serve God, but we have this heart to serve one another. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. And so we, we, um, we looked at this verse. Let me, let me just read it to you from Mark 10 and uh, 45 in the Amplified. Jesus described himself as a servant. It's, he said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You know, I think sometimes we just read over verses like that and we don't think about who's speaking. Who is speaking here is God. God Almighty. God who created the heavens, created the earth, created the universes, and here He is, God with us, God with man, and He looks at His own creation and He's saying, I'm not here to be served. I am here to serve you. Can't you just see the heart of God? I mean, when you, when you, when you really stop and, and, and begin to study these pictures of Jesus as a servant, it helps you really to understand what God is like. I, th I, think, I think that's the road we need to really be on. Yeah. We need to be uh, endeavoring and searching the Word of God to really find out what God is like. I know we've received Him. I know we've crossed that road. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we've, we've crossed a lot of roads just to get to where we are right now with God. Amen. You know, I was, I, was, I was thinking about this on my way back. I went to Oklahoma to help my mom. And she's doing great, by the way. Just awesome, 
awesome, awesome, awesome just seeing the hand of God move in her life and in her body. But it was interesting when I was back there, somebody came to work on some things at their house. And when he walked in the door, I recognized him right away. I go, oh my goodness, I went to school with you. And um, so we, you know, we started talking and um, come to find out he, he claims to be an atheist. And, he, and he's not closed. He's not closed. He's just not sure. He just, you understand what I mean? He just doesn't, doesn't know. <clears throat> and and I, was, I was thinking, well, I, you know, I know how to pray for him. But I thought to myself, you know, I had to cross that road in just acknowledging that there's a God. You know what I'm saying? That's progress from not believing that there is a God. But you know, then, then, you, then you have to come to another place where you think, okay, well, who is God? If I believe there is a God, who, who is He? Who is he? Well, is he Muhammad? Is he Buddha? I mean, there's a lot of options out there. there. This is interesting. I thought this was really interesting. I was reading an article about, you know, AI, you know, artificial intelligence. It's kind of a new thing in our society. Um, the people in the AI community are, are, are beginning to say that they believe that all of this knowledge from everywhere that comes into this little database called AI, that's their God. That's their God. So you got people that think, you know, Buddha's God, AI is God. But if you're smart, you'll go to the Bible. You'll go to the Bible, which has been proven to be accurate, by the way. You know, having this conversation with, with guy on the plane, you know, well, you know, I just don't, well, I'm like, well, it's, it's accurate for history. It's accurate for geography. And nobody even disputes that Jesus existed. No, not, not any religion even disputes that he existed. But see, if you get in the Bible, you not only find about those things, you find out about who God is is and the theme of the Bible is Jesus Christ why would it not be accurate in in telling us in informing us who God is it's Jesus hallelujah and it tells you what to do with him believe on him and receive him into your heart and thank God we've crossed that road but then people many times just stop there. But I'm telling you, there's more that God wants to reveal to us. He wants to not just reveal who He is. He wants to reveal what He's like. What is God like? Well, how are you going to know? You're going to have to get in the Scriptures. Are you over here in John 5? I, I love this verse. Um, Oh, I love this verse. John 5, 39. Look at this. It says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they, talking about what? The Scriptures are they which testify of me. The Word, the Bible, the Scriptures testify about who Jesus is. If you want to find out about Jesus and about what God is like, you're going to have to get in your Bible. Well, I heard somebody prophesy and they said such and such. I don't care what somebody prophesied. I care what the Bible says. Yeah. Amen. And in the Bible, all throughout, it's so awesome. You begin to see what I call pictures of Jesus. You see pictures of Jesus. You see him as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You see him as the bomb of Gilead. You see him as the redeemer. You begin to see him as deliverer. You see him as a provider who meets all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And when you get in here, you see all these different pictures of him and all these these things that help you understand His nature. 
and what he wants to be to you. He isn't just these things for himself. He is all that he is for you. He wants to give it to you. He wants to manifest himself in that way to you. And one of those pictures is Jesus as a servant. We are in a covenant relationship with God. Understand this. We are in a covenant relationship with God. And normally you make covenants with people that are strong. God made a covenant with people that were weak. And then he gave us everything that he is. And in this covenant relationship, this is a relationship where he serves you. Yes, we serve him, but I'm telling you, you can never outserve God. You can never outserve God. What he brings to the table is huge in how he serves God. Us. And he did it from the very beginning. He did it in his coming. He did it all throughout his earthly ministry. He did it at Calvary. And he did it in his resurrection. And he is still doing it today. He's at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. Hallelujah. He is still serving you. Still. He lives to serve us. It is just awesome the love that he has for us. Amen. Amen. So tonight, I want to go into, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe over the next few weeks, go into some particulars on how Jesus serves us, some particular ways that he serves us. Tonight, we're going to look at, and, and probably next uh, Wednesday too for sure, we're going to look at how Jesus serves us as being our mediator. Our mediator. Over here in um, 1 Timothy 2. Hallelujah. Are you strapped in? Oh man. Are you ready to see Jesus? Are you ready to see what he's like? Oh, he's awesome. He is awesome. He is a servant. I'm telling you, it's just awesome. 1 Timothy 2 says this. Well, I like this first part. For there is one God. <laughs> How many? Hallelujah. One God. This guy on the plane, he's like, well, you know, I believe that there's just many gods. I go, no, 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 no. There can just be one. There's one that's responsible for everything that we see. And he must be pretty big. You know what I'm saying? There's only one who all wisdom flows from, all truth flows from. The Bible says there's one God. Hallelujah. There is one God and one mediator between God and men. It's the man, Christ Jesus. So it's not the Pope. It's not a priest. It's not even a pastor or another minister. It's Jesus. Jesus is your mediator. He has this uh, mediatorial ministry, and it's huge. It's huge. And I want to show you how he serves us as mediator. Go to Luke chapter 4. And let's just look at some of these things. And while you're going over there to Luke 4, I'm going to give you um, some definitions of mediator. This one we're going to look at next week more in detail. And I'm sure you've probably heard this definition before. Uh, A mediator is a go-between. It's a go-between. A mediator is a middle um, reconciler. We're going to talk about that next week, how Jesus at Calvary, oh, aren't you glad that he got in the middle (laughs) with his blood, with his redemptive work? 
and he reconciled you back to God? You know why we praise him? Because he's the only one who could do that for us. And he and he alone is responsible for that reconciliation. Nobody else reconciled me to God, but Jesus and his blood. And I know for me, anytime I would think about Jesus, my mediator, I would think about that, that particular work of him uh, serving me as my mediator at redemption. But Jesus has always been a mediator. He's always been a mediator. He, he, he was a mediator even during his earthly ministry. He is still mediating today in your life by way of the Holy Spirit. His ministry just continued on through the Holy Spirit. And then we do see Him mediating for us at the death, burial, and the resurrection. But I want to talk about His earthly ministry. Because one of the definitions of mediator is this, and I love this. It means to intervene. It means to intervene. It means you've got this this intervention. You've got this one who's always stepping into the middle of the mess. Stepping into the middle of the problem. And Jesus has an anointing on him to step in. Jesus has an anointing on him to step into situations and bring deliverance and bring healing and bring provision and bring whatever it is that you need. Jesus is anointed to step in and intervene. Hallelujah. And we see that here in Luke chapter 4. You see see intervention in this verse. Can we read it together? Luke 4 and look at verse 18. We're real familiar with this, but I want want you to see this intervention, this, this mediatorial ministry where Jesus steps in and he serves people with the anointing. It says here, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So we know that from Acts that Jesus was anointed with what? With the power of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit and then God anointed him so that he could go and do good, go heal, go bless, go minister to. Basically just go make people's lives better. He said, I have this anointing. I've been anointed with this Holy Ghost power. He said, to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm here now, and I have this anointing on me to minister to you. doesn't matter what it is. If you are sick, I am here to bring healing to you. If you are broken, I am here to bring restoration to you. If you're here and you're possessed, I am here to bring deliverance to you. If you were oppressed, I'm here to set you free. I'm here to intervene in your situation and bring you help. See, this was totally different from the way that religion dealt with people during this time. Religion had a system that if you were broken, if you were possessed, if you were sick, if you had anything wrong with you, you know how they dealt with you? You were an outcast. If you were sick, you couldn't stay in the city. You had to go on the outsides of the city. Or we'll, we'll, we'll provide a little place for you somewhere in the city where nobody has to deal with you. 
the truth. If you're a prostitute, you're an outcast. We don't, we, they had no help provided for people. I mean, you were just done. You were branded and you were called an outcast and nobody had anything to do with you. But when Jesus came, oh man, they hated him for this. They hated him for this because they liked their little system of dealing with people. But when Jesus came, he sought out the broken people. He sought out the sick people. He sought out the ones that nobody would have anything to do with. He, he interacted with them. He talked with them. Sometimes for a long time. He had meals with them. <laughs> and he intervened in their situation. He stepped into the mess that nobody else wanted to do anything about. Oh no, those people, they, they, just, they just need to get out of here. We, just, we don't want anything to do with them. And Jesus is like, they're the ones that I've come for. I've got this anointing and it's for them. And so he would, he would find them. He would talk to them. He would demonstrate love to them. He would show them that God is no respecter of persons. He would demonstrate to them that they were not overlooked. I mean, can you just imagine how they felt? The dignity that they felt because here's Jesus talking to them and then he didn't stop there. He would minister the anointing to them, deliver them, hallelujah. He brought this intervention because he is a mediator. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I just give you some examples of, of how Jesus <laughs> dealt with people bringing this, this anointing and just totally upending religion system. You know, I, you know what I love about Jesus? He was not afraid of them. I mean, they hated him so bad, they seethed. They seethed. He's messing with our system. He's messing with the way we've always done it. <laughs> but Jesus was just so bold. He went in the boldness of the Holy Spirit and sought people out and ministered to them. Are you getting a picture here of Jesus and the heart of God for people? Are you seeing the heart of God for you? That God, no matter what it is that you're going through, He wants to help you because He's a mediator. He wants to intervene. Oh, but it's messy. He gets in the middle of messes. He's not afraid of a mess. It's what he came for. Oh, I love this. Can I just give you some examples? I just, I, I love these. Remember, he intervened and healed the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath day. Remember that? Saw that man, his hand was all withered. And Jesus went over there and said, and told him to stretch it out. And it was healed and made whole like the other. And they were so upset and they were so angry because it's the Sabbath day. But see, Jesus wasn't focused on a day. God's not focused on a day. He's trying to show them that God regards bringing deliverance to somebody over regarding a day. But he intervened. He intervened um, and he stood in the way of the religious people that wanted to stone the woman that was caught in adultery. You remember that? I mean, they caught her in adultery, drug her all the way down there, threw her in front of Jesus. What are you going to do with her? He said, well, any of you that's without sin, you cast the first stone at her. And what'd they do? They walked away. Jesus, his focus wasn't on her sin. His focus was on restoring her. I mean, he meant, can you imagine how she must have felt? And then to come in contact with the forgiveness of God. And God, here's God in the flesh telling her, go your way. Sin no more, but he's, he's bringing restoration. He's bringing healing to her life. Then we see um, where Jesus just totally upended 
their system when he healed the lepers and the woman with the issue of blood. They weren't even supposed to be in the city. I mean, it took a lot of faith for them to even come seek out Jesus. But he intervened and ministered to them and brought healing to their life. He intervened um, in the life of the woman that was at the well. Remember the woman at the well? I, I love that passage. That, that, is, um, that is the longest we see Jesus sitting down to talk and minister to somebody is the woman at the well. And she was an outcast. She was Samaritan. She had all those husbands. And then the one she's with isn't her husband. I mean, in the eyes of people, she's the lowest of the low. And here's Jesus spending time with her, intervening in her life, <laughs> and bringing salvation to her. They hated him for stuff like this. But this is Jesus. He's like, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm here for. I am here with this anointing, and it is to get in the middle of people's lives, in the middle of their situation, and bring them deliverance, healing, and help. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? He intervened with blind Bartimaeus. Sit down over there, old man. Rattle your can, but stay out of our way. Nothing but a nuisance. An outcast. Why? Simply because he was blind. That he heard Jesus was coming by. What did he do? He got all excited. He stood up. He goes, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They're all, shh. <laughs> Sit down. Leave Jesus alone. He wouldn't, leave. He wouldn't shut up. <laughs> what did Jesus do? He went right to him and intervened in his situation and took that precious anointing, that precious power of God and intervened in his situation and he gave sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Why would he do this? You know, we, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. He's motivated by his mercy and compassion. You see that all throughout the scriptures, whether it's for somebody that's hungry, whether it's for somebody that's possessed, whether it's for somebody that's backslidden, whether it's for somebody that need, needs healing, God is motivated by the love and the compassion that he has for us. I understand the element of faith, that faith, you see that too in all of these accounts. You see that people's faith in him, trusting in him, calling on him, gave God access into people's lives access into their situation. And that is such, a, that's such a, an important part for us to understand. But I think sometimes we're so heavy on ministering on that end that we totally neglect seeing the heart of God and His willingness and His desire, hallelujah, to do it for you. Come on. Jesus. This is what He's here for. Why do you think he came? He came so that he could be a constant intervention in your life. You're never going to be perfect to where you don't need him. Not going to happen. You need him. You need his ministry of him being a mediator, an intervener in your life. And I'm telling you, all you got to do is call on him. All you got to do is go to him. And he's saying, I'm here to help you. I'm here. I've come. I've done it for you. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go over to, um, uh, you, you can go over to Mark 5. I've got to hurry. Can I just read to you Hebrews 4? You getting anything out of this? Oh, don't you love the Lord? He in no way 
wants to leave us to ourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, and I'm going to read out of verse 14. We, we read this a few weeks ago, but I want to show you something here. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So he never gave in to any of it, but he understands what it's like to be tempted he understands what it's like to be human. Hallelujah. I know people don't like that, but it's, it's in the Bible. You have a very compassionate high priest. You have a very loving high priest. Verse eight, uh, 16, it says, Let us therefore come. Come, come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, look at this, and find grace to help in our time of need. Folks, he is anointed to help you. Jesus is anointed to help you. Jesus is anointed to help you in your situation. Amen. There's an anointing on him. I mean, you may have, maybe even by your own doing, I'm astounded sometimes at how people can mess up their life. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. You've created all this mess. You didn't even need the devil's help. I mean, the devil might be just standing back and be like, not needed here, I'll go elsewhere. They've got this one. Figure it out. But you know what? Oh, I love this about Jesus. Even if you've done it to yourself, if, if you'll just come to him, heart of humility, and, and that's, that's required. Heart of humility, an openness towards Him, a faith in Him. God, I know that you can, I know you can put my life back together again. He will. He has an anointing to put people's lives back together again. And I'm going to tell you, that just proves His loyalty to us. He is loyal. He is loyal. Even when you haven't been. Well, I don't think people deserve it. None of us deserve it. If we're going to start talking about deserve, we're all in the not pile. We're all in the not basket. None of us deserve it. But God is who He is. This is just what He's like. He never gives up on anybody. He never backs out of the deal. For people that lose their salvation, it's because they decided to renounce. He doesn't renounce them, they renounce Christ. He's married even to the backslider. Well, I don't like that. Well, you would like it if you ever needed it. And I tell you, there's a lot of people, their brain went squirrely. You know what I mean? And one day their eyes were opened and they were so thankful that there was a God, there was a Father that was still there. Amen. 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 And here's another one. I'm going to just read it to you. I put it in my notes. I didn't know if I would share it with you. But you know, even when you've messed up, God's not even ashamed of you. Let me read you a verse here. This is Hebrews 2 and 11 in the God's Word translation. It says, Jesus, who makes people holy 
And all those who are made holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus isn't ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He's never ashamed to claim you. Isn't that amazing? Even if you've messed up big time, He loves you. He's not leaving you. He's just waiting for you to figure it out. The Holy Spirit, He's interceding for you. Just the fact that He intercedes for us should show us that He doesn't give up on anybody. Hallelujah! But come to Him. Know what kind of God you serve. You serve a God that wants to intervene. Can, can I show you a scripture over in Mark 5? Are you over there? This is an example to me of, I mean, there's so many in the scriptures, but, but this one really I love. This man was so, this is, this is, this is the, the demon-possessed man. Um, talk about an outcast. I mean, they cast him out in the, the graveyard. Don't come in town, but you can stay out in the graveyard. You can live in the mountains. <laughs> They cast him out, though, because he was crazy. But you see the compassion that Jesus has. You see how Jesus feels about people. And you see how Jesus stepped in with that anointing and delivered this man, where religion, religion was just going to leave him out there to die, I guess. I tell you, you got to be real careful that religion doesn't creep in. Because we can get it too. Even our little word of faith circle. Where we think we've left all those traditions behind. Well, some of them I think we brought with us. And some are, sometimes our attitudes... Our, this harshness that we have towards people that don't have it all together. And all the people that have it all together, they think, you know, they huddle together and they leave, you know, they're just kind of snubbing. Those people. They're the outcasts. Come on, I'm preaching a lot better than y'all are amen and that's not Jesus. That is not his heart at all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mark 5, verse 1. Look at this. And they came over unto the other side of the sea and into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Just imagine that. As soon as he gets out of the boat, <laughs> this demon-possessed man runs up to him. And it says in verse 3, Who, this man, had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So he was just out of control. I mean, you see that supernatural um, effect there where, you know, they would try to chain him up and, and he would just break the chains off and just go running around everywhere scaring everybody. Verse 5, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Oh, but I love verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. You want to know something? I'm telling you, I've seen this time and time again. People who, they've got these problems, they've got these chains in their life, they've got all this oppression, they're, they're off in these different lifestyles and all this. They know down deep in their heart that Jesus is the answer Amen. for them. 
I'm telling you, there's a witness on the inside of them, especially when they encounter God, especially when they encounter Him in us. When they encounter his presence, you know, uh, wasn't, wasn't Sunday morning so good, you know, Pastor Jeremy's message on unity and, and, and how important it is, you know, for, for us to be edified and, you know, when we come to church and for the power of God, for there to be a room for the anointing to, and the presence of God to flow. Do you know how important that is? Yes, yes, Because when people come and they encounter that, Oh man, right on the inside of their heart, that witnesses with them. This, this is it. This is it. This is what I've been looking for. This is what will help me. I remember a friend of mine years ago, God had delivered her from that lesbian uh, lifestyle. She said, <laughs> she said, she said, when I was in it, I was in it all the way. She said, I mean, I was promoting it. And she said, I had... She goes, I was very intentional about how I did my hair. I was very intentional about what I wore, you know, how I walked, talked. She goes, everything about me represented that. Everything about me represented that. And she had a neighbor who invited her to come to church. And she said, I remember telling my friend, I don't think the people at your church would want me to come. And she goes, oh, yeah, we want you to come. So she said, so I went. And she said, you know, there was no doubt for anybody that looked at me what I was into. <laughs> she said, but I'm sitting there in that service. And she said, God is ministering to my heart. <sighs> the Holy Spirit is ministering to my heart and talking to me about my life and talking to me about how the life I'm in is not right. And she said, I knew sitting there, I knew sitting there that my way out of this life was to make Jesus the Lord of my life and to follow him. Amen. And he totally delivered her. Hallelujah. Totally <laughs> delivered her. This man, I mean, he's just, he's just a nut. Demon possessed, running around naked, out of his mind. But he sees Jesus and immediately he knew there was something on, isn't that amazing? That there's something down on the inside of people that witnesses immediately, Jesus is your answer. Yes. And that's what he did. He ran to him and he fell down and he began to worship Jesus. And, and, and just for time's sake, drop down to verse 13. Uh, this man came to Jesus and Jesus intervened. Jesus intervened, think, well, man, he's naked. He's probably dirty. He's probably stinky. He's crazy. Jesus came for that. Jesus came for this man, and everybody liked him. Jesus came for this man, and everybody that's got a messy life. You know, even you can be in a messy situation, and you didn't even get yourself there. It's just an attack. But you want to know something? Jesus is your intervener. Amen. He's anointed to step in. <laughs> I said he's anointed just to step in with his anointing and minister to you and give you what you need. Help you out of that. Bring restoration. Bring life. Bring help. Bring deliverance. Bring healing. Bring provision. Whatever it is that you need. He's anointed. I'm here. I'm here. I'm Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and He's anointed me. He's anointed me to step in. To intervene. And to help you. He's still the same Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If this was his heart during his earthly ministry, it's his heart today for you and me. Oh, man. I've got to hurry. Verse 13, uh, And Jesus forthwith gave them leave. He cast them out. Cast those devils out. The unclean spirits went out, entered into the swine. 
The herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done, and they came to Jesus, and they see him, they see this man that was possessed with the devil and had the legion, and he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And the, the Greek word there for right mind is mind made free. The anointing made his mind free. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, no matter where somebody's, maybe drugs or whatever, the anointing is a supernatural power that God will minister to somebody to make their mind right. I love this. They saw him sitting there clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And so this godly fear came on them when they saw what God had done for this man. And he wanted to go with Jesus. <laughs> He's like, I want to go with you. Jesus said, no, you need to stay here and you need to go tell everybody what God's done for you and tell them about a compassionate God that ministered to your life. Hallelujah. Folks, what do you need God to intervene in your life? Is he any respecter of persons? Will he do it for all these people in the Bible and not do it in your life? <laughs> he's still intervening. He's still intervening. You know how he's doing it today? By way of the Holy Spirit. His ministry, this mediatorial ministry, continues today by way of the Holy Spirit. He said to his disciples, he goes, I'm leaving. I'm going away. But he goes, I'm sending another Helper. That word another means exact duplicate. I'm sending an exact duplicate helper. Who'd been helping them up to that point? Jesus. He was intervening, providing for them, feeding them, helping them, healing them, doing all these things for them. He's like, I'm sending an exact duplicate. An exact duplicate helper, and he is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God wants to minister to your life. He wants to serve you through this ministry, this, this ministry of him being a mediator and intervening. It ain't too messy for Jesus. It's not too difficult for him. Amen. And so Jesus has served us as a mediator through His earthly ministry, through the Holy Spirit. And we'll see next week, we're going to look at it next week, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Hallelujah. He is the one who reconciled us back to the Father. Amen. Don't you love Jesus? Don't you see, don't you see Him as one who serves you? He didn't come to be served. He came to serve us. He came to serve the outcast. He came to serve people that were in need. He came to serve every single person because everybody needed Him. Amen. Let's lift up our heart. Let's thank Him. Father, we just praise You tonight. We thank You. Thank You for Your heart for us. We are overwhelmed at the love that you have for us. We truly are. Just the fact that you sent Jesus for us. Just the fact that he still desires to help us. He just said, come. Come and receive help. Come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help in your time of need. Lord, we thank you for that invitation. We thank you for revealing to us your care, the care of the Father, how much you desire to do in our lives, how much you desire to give to us all that you are and all that you have. We love you and we, we bless your name tonight. And we thank you for serving us so well. Thank you for meeting needs in our lives. 
Thank you for bringing healing power. Thank you for bringing peace and comfort. You're such a comfort to us. Thank you for bringing provision, supernatural provision, where there was no way, but you made a way. That is you serving us. You doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. That is you serving us. You're such a good God. And we worship you tonight. And we thank you that you reveal yourself to us in all of your goodness. And we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. If you're watching tonight and you don't know Jesus, if you don't know my Jesus, you need him. You need him in your life. He loves you. He wants you. He's after you. He's sending people across your path to lead you to Him and draw you to Himself. Call on Him right now. Don't wait another day. Lift up your heart to Jesus right now. Just pray this prayer. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I accept Jesus as my Lord. I receive Him into my heart. I receive Your forgiveness. I receive that washing of the blood, that washing, that blood washes me, washes all my sin away. The guilt and the shame of it, it's all washed away. And I receive forgiveness. I receive right standing with God. And I give God all the praise. I give Jesus all the thanks for saving me and redeeming me. It's Him that I call on. I call on Jesus to save me. And I receive salvation now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I know it was just a short prayer. But it's, it's about believing in your heart and it's about calling on the right name because His name is the only name that can save. So if you did that, I want you to write us and let us know because we want to pray with you and stand with you that God's will will be accomplished in your life. Welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. All of heaven rejoices because you accepted Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I believe people are getting saved every week. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hall Would you get something out of that tonight? Hallelujah. We're going to finish up on, on that portion of it next week, but there's still, some more, there's still some more to go in just seeing how Jesus serves us. Amen. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to give. Ushers are in the aisle. Uh, to give you an offering envelope. And while they're doing that, you can also text 84321. I don't want to forget that. 84321, you can text to give. Just a few announcements. Next week, we're going to be meeting in the gym lobby because they're going to be using the plaza for something else. So we'll be meeting over there for midweek Bible study. So uh, we'll remind you on Sunday. Um, we have just a few things. Uh, we've got Holy Ghost service coming up on April the 28th. Don't want to forget about that. We have Youth Fire Conference uh, December 6th through the 8th. You can find out more about that in the bulletin. Our neighborhood outreach is April the 27th at 10 a.m. and in the bulletin, you'll find out where to meet. We're going to meet at Marion v. Ashley Community Center. We're going to leave from there. It's going to be really awesome. The youth have an escape room challenge. Um, uh, the cost is $60. Uh, the money is due this Sunday. And that includes the, the challenge and also a meal. So Pastors Martin and Cassandra can give you more information about that. Christian Foundations every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And then I don't know how many of y'all knew already, but uh, Brother Jerry Seville. Y'all remember Brother Jerry Seville? Who was, he was here at our church this time last year. He went home to be with Jesus on Monday morning. And so he just stepped over into glory. And so we just keep his family, his, sis, his uh, uh, sister Carolyn. Uh, you know, they've known each other since they were kids. And she said, I've loved him since I was nine years old. And so, you know, that's a, that's a, a beautiful, beautiful love story that they had. But keep Sister Carolyn in your prayers and his daughters, Jerry Ann and Terry. And I know they're really, they're missing him already. 
but don't you know Jesus is coming back soon for us? It's not going to be very long. Can you imagine the reunion that we're going to have in heaven? It is going to, what a day. Oh, what a day. Hallelujah. Tears, laughter, joy, overwhelming. When the whole, you think about it, the whole family of God, half of us are here, half of us are there, but all of us will be in the same place. All of us in the same location. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you. Shake hands with 5,000 people. Tell them the Lord is good to me. We'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you guys.